Welcome to Hard und Trocken. In this video, I want to give you an overview over the relational database model and the structured query language SQL. You will understand what a relational database model is and you will do your first steps in SQL. Let us start with pointing out some high-level features of the relational database model. At first, what is the relational model? What do we mean when we talk about the relational model? Well, the relational model is a way to store data in a structured way. The way how the data are structured allows to model relations between certain aspects of the data. The relational model is a very established model which has been around for decades. Typically, even today, if we speak of a database, in most cases we mean a relational database. The relational model is a very simple model. It is easy to extract information from it and it is efficiently implemented. The basic components of the structure of a relational model are so-called tables or relations. A table can be pictured as an Excel table with columns and rows, each column typically representing another attribute. A table itself consists of different rows or datasets, which in turn consist of different attributes carrying certain values. So the most important structural aspects of a table are the columns or attributes and the rows or tuples. Each row or tuple represents a dataset which consists of different attributes of certain values. It sounds a little abstract, but it will all get very clear as soon as we look at our first example. A schema is the structure of the relations or the tables. It is just another word for the database itself. A database is nothing else than the collection of tables or relations. And finally, an instance denotes the contents of a relation at a given point in time. So you can think of an instance as a snapshot of a database. Typically, the contents of a database constantly change, so the instances at two different points in time will typically look different. We now look at a very simple example. In this example, we have only one table. The table is called tools and consists of four columns and five rows. The columns are called name, weight, price and tag. Obviously, each row or tuple represents one tool with a name, weight, price and some tag. The tag may represent some category, for instance, the place where the tool is stored. The table tools can be thought of as a typical part of a database or a data warehouse of a producing company. Of course, in reality, that table would have much more datasets and also more attributes. Now, databases are not only about storing information, but also about retrieving and updating information. In order to retrieve and update information, we have to communicate with a database. That communication is done using so-called queries. In a query, we can precisely specify which part of information we are interested in. In order to create queries, we use a programming language called SQL, or Structured Query Language. I now want to switch over to the software SQLite Studio and show you the first basic steps with SQL. Before we start, I want to give you a little orientation within SQLite Studio. I have loaded a database called Product into SQLite Studio. It consists of several tables and one of these tables is called Tools. This is the only table we are interested in for our example. If I double-click on Tools, I will see the structure and content of that table. Here you see the four columns name, weight, price and tag, as well as the five datasets, each of which represents one tool. Now, in order to type an SQL query, we need to open an SQL editor window. This is done by clicking on that symbol which looks like a sheet of paper and a pencil. Now, because I want to keep the view of the structure of the table tools, I want to tile the windows. So now you see the structure of the database itself over here, which is basically the list of the tables. You see the table tools and its structure over here. And that is our SQL editor where we can type our SQL queries. Now let's start with our first SQL query. Let's say we want to find all tools from the table tools, which cost at least 500. 
That means we want to select all data sets from this table where the price for the respective data set is greater than or equal 500. So in other words, we want to select all tools or all data sets from the table tools where the price of the data set is greater than or equal 500. Let's check this by hand. That should be this one, the second one, and this one, the last one. Because the table tools is an example table and is very small, of course, this request can be handled easily manually. However, in reality, this table could consist of thousands of entries. In this case, the request cannot be handled manually anymore and we need the help of the machine. So the SQL query we need is the following. It starts with the word select, select, and then followed by a little star symbol. Select star. Star simply means anything, no restriction. So select star from and from is followed by the name of the table we are referring to. In our case, the name of the table is tools. So select star from tools. So you see tools has already been highlighted by the software because it is recognized as a table name. Now select star from tools and now we have a restriction. The restriction is with a price greater than or equal 500. The restriction is written using a where, where, and now where what? Well, the name of the attribute, which is price, where price, and now greater than or equal, which is just a greater than symbol followed by an equal symbol, followed by the value. 500. And we close that query using a semicolon. So select star from tools where price is greater than or equal 500. Now if you want to execute this query, we press that little blue arrow symbol. Let's do that. And you get the result of our query down here. It's called the so-called result set. And you see, as expected, we get two data sets the second one with a price 540 and the last one with a price 632. So voila, that was our first SQL query. Now let's summarize what we've just learned. We wanted to find all tools which cost at least 500 within our table tools. We used the following SQL query. Select star from tools where price is greater or equal than 500, semicolon. We obtained the following result set consisting of the tool T1000 and TX, which indeed cost more than 500. Now on this query, we used a comparison. We compared the value of the attribute price of each dataset with the number 500. There are different symbols or symbol combinations which can be used for comparisons. If we want an attribute to be equal to a value, we use the equal sign. For smaller than or equal, we use this combination. For strictly smaller than, we use this. For greater than or equal, we use this symbol. In order to express inequality, we use this symbol combination. So we use this if we want an attribute not to be equal to a given number. And finally, we use this symbol if we want an attribute to be strictly greater than a value. SQL is not case sensitive, so we could have also used capital letters or even a mixture of small and capital letters within this query. Now let's modify that first example a little. Let's say we want to find all tools which cost at least 500, but simultaneously way less than 70. So this was the SQL query of our first example. Select star from tools where price is greater than or equal 500. But now we have an additional criterion to be fulfilled, namely that the weight should be less than 70. We incorporate this new criteria regarding the weight into this so-called where condition. We do this by adding the word and and just adding that new criterion. And weight, which is the name of the column weight, and weight should be smaller than 70. And that's it. Let's execute the query and check if it works. There we go. We get one data set, which is TX, which has a weight smaller than 70 and the price is greater than 633. 
and by checking the values manually, we can easily verify that this indeed is the right result set. Now this was an example for the combination of two criteria within the WHERE clause or the WHERE condition. In fact, it is possible to combine multiple criteria using different logical operators. Let's have a look at this example. This SQL query selects all tools from tools where either the weight is greater than 70 and the category or the tag is equal to Z or the price is smaller than 550 and the weight is greater than 75 and the category or the tag is unequal to A. Well, this is an example of a complex condition, which is the result of the combination of multiple criteria. It is important to be aware of the brackets, because the brackets mean that the expressions within the brackets are evaluated first, whereas the expressions outside of the brackets are evaluated at a later stage. Let's see how this SQL query is executed within SQLite Studio. So here is the expression and I simply have to press execute. Let's do that. So apparently the result set contains two datasets. The second one of the datasets, this one here, has the tag Z and a weight which is greater than 70. So that second line satisfies the first condition here. As this first condition is combined with the second condition using the logical operator R, we don't care if that second one is satisfied in the case of this second dataset. It is enough to know that we know that it satisfies this first part of the condition. The first dataset has a tag B, that means it does definitely not satisfy that first part of the condition. But let's check if the second one is satisfied. Well, the tag is unequal to A because it's B, that's fine. The weight is should be greater than 75 and yes it's 89 it's greater than 75 and the price should be smaller than 550 and let's see yes the price is 491 which is smaller than 550. So we have checked that indeed these two data sets satisfy that complex condition. Now there is something else in this example which was new and needs to be explained more detailedly. I'm referring to the comparison of an attribute with a text string. Let's look at a very simple example. We want to find all tools in the table tools which have the tag B. Now as the values of the attribute tag apparently are character strings, we need to compare this attribute with a character string B. Now comparing an attribute with a character string is very simple. We simply have to put the character string into quotation marks. Usually, in SQLite, we use single quotation marks. However, the use of double quotation marks is also possible. But once we have made our choice which one we want to use, we have to keep using those consistently. So now let's create the query which finds all tools with tag B. That is, select dar from tools where tag equals B and execute. And you see that exactly those datasets are selected from tools which have the tag B. At this stage, I want to point out to you that in all queries we have created so far, we have used select star from tools. Star is a simple way to say every column or every attribute. So a long way to rephrase this query in natural language might be Select all datasets from tools which have the tag B and please return me all columns or all attributes of these datasets. And this is why we get this little table as a return which has the same set of columns as the original table tools does. Now in many situations we are not interested in all of the attributes. We rather want the SQL query to return a special selection of the columns. In other words, we would like to specify the columns which are returned in our result set. Let's again look at a very simple example. We want to select all datasets from tools, but we are only interested in the name and the price of the respective tool. This is done by the following query. Select name, comma, 
price from tools semicolon and execute and you see the result set contains each data set but restricted to the columns name and price now this restriction to certain specified columns can now be combined with the where condition we have already been studying for instance we can say select name price from tools where price is smaller than or let's say greater than 500 and execute and again you see that we only get the columns name and price but now the table is also restricted to data sets namely to those two which satisfy the condition that the price should be greater than 500. When using the where condition here we could also refer to attributes which are not part of the selection here. For instance we could say that we want the tag to be equal to b and execute. There we go. As you've seen, in SQL queries, we can specify the column values which we want to be returned. However, instead of obtaining the values of the attributes themselves, it is also possible to obtain the results of some simple calculations involving the attributes. Let us illustrate this with a simple example. For all tools in the table tools, we want to calculate the price weight ratio. That means for each tool we want the quotient of price divided by weight. So to be precise, for each tool we want to get its name as well as the price weight ratio. So we type select name comma price divided by weight from tools. There we go. We can execute. So you see that SQL directly performs this calculation for each tool, taking each price, dividing it by the respective weight. Next, we look at the ordering functionality in SQL. Ordering works very similar to what we know from Excel. If we add an ordering command to our query, the result set will be ordered according one or more attributes. Let's build a query where the name and the price of the tools are returned, ordered descending by price. It looks the following. Select name price from tools and now order by price. And then we have to add DESC for descending, which means that the order will be descending. And execute. As you can see, all tools are listed descendingly ordered by price. Now we'll have a look at a functionality in SQL, which is a little more complex. It is called aggregation. Aggregation means that SQL allows us to calculate certain aggregated values over the complete table or over certain subsets of the table. An aggregated value of an attribute is a value which can only be calculated if we take multiple datasets into account. Examples are the average, the sum, the maximum, or the minimum of multiple values. So for instance, in our tools table, we could calculate the average weight of all tools contained in the table. We also could calculate the maximum weight, the minimum weight, or the sum of the weights of all tools contained in the table. In our example, we want to calculate the average weight and the total price. Total price meaning the sum of the prices of all tools contained in the table tools. The SQL query we need for this purpose is the following. Select AVG, which stands for average of weight, comma, sum, which means the sum of price from tools and execute. So you see as the result, we get only one data set containing the average value for the weights and the sum of all prices. Another important aggregation functionality is to count the number of rows or datasets either within the complete table or within certain subsets. In this example, we want to count how many entries are in the complete table tools. We do this using the following query. Select and now count and brackets star count star from tools and execute. And the result is the number five. So count star is always used when we want to count the number of rows. So now things get a little more complicated because now we don't want to aggregate over the complete table, 
but we want to aggregate over so-called groups. Groups are the result of dividing all datasets of the complete table into a certain number of groups such that each dataset belongs to exactly one group. This is also called a partition of the table. The creation and the existence of these groups is only temporary during the query. By completion of the query, the grouping will be cancelled. Typically, a grouping is created according to the different values of a certain attribute. In case of the table tools, we use the attribute tag for building a grouping. All datasets whose tag value is A will build the first group. All datasets whose tag value is B will build the second group. Finally, all datasets whose tag value is C will build the last group. This last group consists of only one dataset. Now we can ask the question, what is the average weight and the total price for each category? That means for each group. In contrast to our earlier example, where we calculated the average weight and the total price for the complete table, we now want SQL to do that for each of these three groups. Let's see how that works. Now let's start with what we did before. It was select average weight and sum of the price from tools. That is the example we already did before. If I execute that, I get the average weight and the sum of all prices over the complete table. But now we want these two quantities to be calculated for the three groups which we build according to the values of the attribute tag. This is done by adding a group by tag to the query. Let's see what happens if we execute this one. As you can see now, we get three datasets in the result set containing three average weights and three sums of prices. Unfortunately, however, the result set doesn't tell us which row belongs to which group or which row belongs to which tag value, A, B or C. But we can remedy this situation by additionally outputting the tag value itself. So we select tag, average weight, sum price from tools, group by tag. Let's execute this and we get three lines with a tag value and the corresponding average weight and total price. Now you see that the headings in the columns of the result set, like average weight and sum price, are exactly the aggregating functions which we have used here, average weight and sum price. In some cases, you might not want to have these technical column names, but to have your own favorite column names instead. You can achieve this by using so-called aliases. An alias is an alternative column name, which we put after the function name using as, followed by the name we have chosen. For instance, a vg underline w. Similarly, we can give another name to some price using as, then sum underline p. If we execute that, you see that the column names take the values which we have defined using the aliases. In the next example, let's find out how many items there are in each category. To answer this question, we have to count the number of datasets in the A group, the B group and the C group. Again, we start with a query we used before in order to calculate the total number of datasets in the table tools. That was select count star from tools, which was five. Now we want to count the number of datasets within each category. That means we have to perform the grouping again. That is done by group by tag. If we execute that, we get two, two, one, but again, we don't know which one is which. This is why we want SQL to additionally output the tag. So we add the tag in front of count. If we execute this, we get a, B, C, and for each of these groups, the respective number of datasets. Now let's have a look at the last SQL functionality we are talking about in this video. It is called aggregation with having. When aggregating using group by, sometimes we are not interested to get the results for all groups. We rather want to narrow down the result set to the results of certain specified groups. The specification of the groups we are interested in is done using the word having. Let's look at the following example. We want to select the minimal and the maximal price for each category 
but only for those categories which have more than one item. So the restriction to the categories with more than one item is the new aspect here. Let's see how this is done. We type the following query. Select tag min of price, which is the minimal price, max price, which is the maximal price, from tools, group by tag. And now we add having, and what do we want? We want the results only for those groups whose number of data sets is greater than one. So having, now we need to count the numbers of data sets using count star, and that should be greater, strictly greater than one. If I execute that, I get two rows, the one for the tag A and the one for the tag B. And if we remember, that is what we expect, because the group C has only one data set. So we don't want to have a result for the group C, but only for the groups A and B. So now let's summarize the syntax of an SQL select statement, which we have discussed so far. All our statements started with select, followed by something which we may call a select expression, which consisted either of a star or a collection of column names or some aggregating function or some calculations involving column names, followed by from and then a table name. Optionally, we could restrict the result set using where followed by a where condition, which could get quite complex by combining multiple conditions. Also optional is the word group by. We use it whenever we want to obtain aggregated results on group level. The groups for which we obtain the results can be filtered or restricted to certain groups using having. Finally, the result set may be ordered by certain column names in an ascending or a descending way. Now that was quite a quick story of basic aspects of SQL queries. In my next video, I want to work out concrete examples with you where we translate natural language requests into SQL queries. Thanks for watching.